Welcome back to the 38th part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework. In this one I think we're going to take a look at customising the admin page a little bit further. So in the last one we looked at customising the sort of Django text at the top, so like the header. In this one I think we're going to take that sort of to the next level and write a class that's going to help us to customise the Django admin. So in this one I want to sort of talk about customising a particular page within a model. So for example we have user profiles here which is a model that we created in our models.py and at the moment we've just got the list of the names of the users associated with each of the user profile objects. Now this is better than the default behavior because if you remember if we look at our models.py you can see that we added this special method here to this class str with double underscores either side of it and this just returns the username of a particular user that's associated with the user profile through this user pro through this user field. So what I want to do, because there's information on this model that we can't really see here, and yet there's all this empty space, I think it'd be nice if we could actually display some more of that information within the model itself. So if you remember, when we changed this text, we went to the admin.py and we defined this but then we sort of overrode it with a custom template which sort of takes precedence over the admin.py in this case so I'm just going to delete that because we don't actually need both of them it's really just one or the other I was just doing that to show you both sort of examples but I'm also going to write a class and I'm just going to use this class to add columns here uh, based on the other fields within that model so I'm going to say uh, this is my user profile admin. So this is the admin class which specifically relates to the user profile model. And then I'm going to say uh, it inherits from admin. So remember we import admin up here. And there's going to be admin dot model admin. So it's saying this is going to be a class that relates to a model. So a model admin. Uh, a bit like a model form, so a model form class would be something you inherit from to uh, link to write a form that links with the model that you defined as well. So it's the same sort of concept here for the admin page itself. So to be able to add this title to the column itself and be able to change it to what we want, we sort of have to do something slightly different here from what we've been doing. So at the moment we've been making a couple of assumptions that the field names are fine for the titles that we want to use for this particular example. So user is user and description is description. But to change it, say I want to change description to user info, I can say user info, but then of course it doesn't know what user info is because that's not on our model. So you, you, you can see we get an error here and it's big complicated red, red error. But what you need to do is define that. So I'm going to define a method and it's going to be called user info. So it takes two parameters in this case, so it's going to take self. And self, of course, is on all methods in a class because they all have to have the ability to be able to pass objects through them. That's just an inherent property of object-oriented design, which Python is an object-oriented language, so that makes sense. But then this also takes a second parameter. And I can show you that by just saying, well, if I just sort of finish off this method by saying pass, just don't do anything, just, you know, it's defined, but it's not going to do anything for the moment. That's what the pass keyword does, it just says, ah, don't do anything, it's fine. And if I refresh, we get an error, so it says it takes one argument, but there are two given. So we need to find another one, and I'll just say uh, this is the object that was passed into this method. So the object parameter is just saying, okay, so for each column that we're defining, so we have one column which is called user info in this case, and for each row in that column, we need to be able to populate each row. So one particular row is going to be represented by the object parameter. So if we want to pass in a, a different value for each of those rows rather than a, a defined constant, then we have to return a variable. If we were to define a constant uh, returning by this method, so let's say for example we just said return uh, some string, this is a string, and then it's just going to populate each row with that string, which is not what we want. So instead what we want to do is say return 
uh, so it's going to be obj, which is what we call object, you know, for short, dot, and then the field that we still want to display. So in this case, we want to, dis to display the description field. So I'm going to say description, and then that should be all we need to do because we've now got those two parameters which it's expecting. So it's going to return object.description. So for each row with respect to that user info column, it's going to populate that with the description that corresponds to the object that's being passed in. So remember, each row in the admin is representative of one object in the database. So it's going to display the info related to that object. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it and let's refresh and see if it works. So I just wait for that balancer to refresh. And now you can see we've got user info, which is our new heading rather than description. And we've also got the description. That's really good. I think that's a really good start. And I think that's covered a lot of the basics of how to customize or at least add columns to your Django admin pages. Um, I'm just going to add a couple more just to show you uh, how I would go about doing that. And in most cases, you're probably going to find that the column heading is going to be fine. So I'm just going to add some more to this tuple. And so I'm going to get that from the models.py because remember the two correspond because inheriting from model admin, so they link together and we linked it, remember, using that dot register method. So the one I'm talking about here is dot register here. And then if we look in our models, we can just say, okay, let's say I don't really want uh, all of these necessarily, but I just want, say, the city website and phone number. So I can come to the Django admin, I can say, uh, city, I can say website, and I can say phone. And in fact what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to change the order of one of these strings because I want to show you the order actually that they appear in the Django admin. So we've got city phone website but in the actual model itself we have city website phone. So now when we refresh, waiting for that to update, refresh again, and now you can see we have city phone website. This tuple here is also a good way of defining the order in which you want your uh, columns to appear in the Django admin. So say you have a really, really long field like this description one, you might want to sort of truncate, you could truncate the text so that it's shorter and only comes to sort of here, even if you have a long description, but I think you also might want to just move it to the end so that people see all the short ones first and then the long one at the end. You could do that by just putting user profile at the end of the tuple. So now that we've done that, one other thing that we could actually do is we could say something like user info dot short description. And this can be useful if you want to sort of say let me just spell it correctly. And this can be useful if you want to sort of have more Pythonic code. Say you want to have a method name with a, a particular uh, sort of name, which is more appropriate to what the method is returning. And then you could have the short description say something else. So in other words, what appears in the actual Django admin. And to demonstrate that, I could just say, uh, let's change user info to just info. And of course, you wouldn't put it like that because it's not defined. So I'll say it is a string. So just like that. And now, if we wait for the development server to refresh, and then we can refresh our page, we can see... So now that you can see the text has changed, so from user info to just info, so that's a good way of being able to sort of override what you call the method name itself. So in the next one, I think I'm going to talk a bit more about how you can customise the Django admin in sort of different ways, and you can do sort of even more advanced customization with it.